Holbrook? Here. Councilor Donovan? Here. Councilor Caterina? Here. Councilor Blaze? Here. Councilor Benedict? Here. Chairman Sullivan? Here. Uh, item four, general public comments, three minutes, address and name. Anyone? My name is Julie Hannon, 14 Mass Road. Chair Sullivan, members of the council, citizens of Scarborough. I believe the letter and memorandum you received from me on Monday speaks for itself. For those of you who have not seen it or have not taken the time to read it, I have some available copies for you. I will simply state that I believe it is essential that our citizens understand their rights. In a republic in which we just pledged, and I saw many of us, but not all of us pledge, in which we, rep we have a representative government, it is essential that our representatives not only understand the laws of our land, but respect the rights of its citizens and uphold those laws. For those of you that are unaware, I contend that our town council representatives, our town manager, and the U.S. Fish and Wildlife have been violating, be it intentional or not, its citizens' rights under both the Maine Constitution and the U.S. Constitution, both the Maine and U.S. Constitutions, as well as violating numerous federal laws that guide the behavior of the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. I would include the Audubon Society if they had any authority but they, I would only accuse of environmental extremism and gross negligence. If your actions and those of Tom Hall and the U.S. Fish and Wildlife were due to ignorance, I do not believe you are any longer ignorant of those rights and laws, and it is your duty to do the right thing. Doing the right thing includes considering the dog owners of this town. Dog owners comprise a significant portion of our population. More than 50% of our population has family pets. The nation has nearly 78 million pet dogs. There are as many pet dogs as there are children under the age of 18. It represents a $7.5 billion industry, including our tourism industry. Dog owners are some of the best advocates for the outdoors and are your active supporters of the protection of the piping plover. In fact, if you've done your research, you will know that dogs deter crows and ravens and hawks, which are primary predators to the piping plover. The nation's, the dogs are some of our best advocates for the outdoor dog owners, <coughs> not the golfers, of Trout's Neck and other recreational beachgoers, they are not necessarily protecting the piping plover. Dog owners should have the same access to recreational opportunities as do tennis players, soccer players, sunbathers, surfers, volleyball players, joggers, bicyclists, and others who use our town parks and beaches. Dog owners have no greater claim than others, and we don't even ask for a fair shake. We ask for three hours and extend off season, extended off-season off hours. The citizens that you represent have spoken. They have signed petitions, a successful referendum, volunteered and donated money to establish a beach policy, guidelines, and education, carefully regulated and looked after. Off-leash beach times can be highly successful with beaches looked after by the grateful dog owners, volunteers, and community groups that support them. With rules clearly posted and doggy bags available and paid for by dog owners and volunteer cleanup crews, our beaches may be the cleanest in Maine. Having beach access in select areas of Scarborough will also increase tourism. More and more hotels are offering to become pet friendly. If you restrict our beaches, you destroy a community, a community of people who play with their dogs at the beach. The New York Times reports, forget the treadmill, get a dog. I will take three more sentences if that's okay with yes. you. In doing so, dog owners, if you, if you give us this time, dog owners need to contribute to the enforcement and education and the cleanup. Councilor Donovan, I don't mean to pinpoint you, but I noticed you did not ask. 
20, Counselor order, Kate order, Sinclair. Don't address counsels by name. Address the whole council, please. I noticed that, Kate, that one of your counselors was not asked if the beach would be closed to all when a piping plover was there. Let's remember the golfers on Prout's neck are hitting golf balls into those nets, nets if they're there. And the beachgoers are leaving trash that attract predators. Thank you. Have you read the U.S. Fish and Guideline Guidelines? Thank you. I think you should. Thank you. Next. Thank you for your time. Howdy. Liam Summers, uh, Holmes Road. Um, I know I, I just heard a point of order, but I did want to ask um, that Mr. Donovan recuse himself from the vote on the proposed uh, recommendations coming out of the ad hoc committee simply because I do believe that is a conflict of interest for him to serve on that committee to craft those proposals and then have the privilege of voting on such proposals. Um, so I would first and foremost ask that he uh, respectfully recuse himself from the vote, not from the discussion, not from shaping them, but from voting on the eventual recommendations. Um, I also want to remind this council that to date uh, to my knowledge, there has not been any incident report submitted by the Inland Fish and Wildlife Department regarding a dog attacking a plover. At very least, you should have evidence of a wrongdoing before accepting a penalty for that. Uh, if such a report does exist, I simply ask the town to furnish it to the citizens for review. Um, now look, we expect our officials to possess certain attributes. High among those would be courage and integrity. Sadly, we have watched our national government flush that down the toilet. Uh, local politics should be a little bit better, a little bit cleaner. We all shop in the same grocery stores. We all have our kids go to the same schools. We all enjoy the same resources of our town. We don't always have to agree on everything, but we should disagree with integrity. We should be able to find common ground, and we should harvest solutions that make this community better. The issue, this issue has unbelievably torn this community apart in ways that I can't even fathom. Um, so where do we go from here? Repeated discussions didn't solve the issue. Uh, a referendum didn't solve the issue. And apparently this majority vote didn't solve the issue, which is mind boggling. So I look to each of you. You alone have the power to put an end to this. You alone have the ability to say enough is enough. Scarborough belongs to the residents, not U.S. Fish and Wildlife, or any special interest group for that matter. You alone have the means to pull this divided community back together again and get back to work on topics that are probably more important overall. So I ask each of you, are you truly confident <coughs> that what you are doing is right for Scarborough? And are you personally willing to put your name on an action or legislation that can contribute to further strife? Or do you have the courage and integrity to stand up and put an end to this finally, to recognize a legal vote occurred that demands your attention, and to understand there's a community of people willing to stand up with you to help make things better and to allow uh, our community to grow? And that allowing a government agency to dictate its terms to our community is never in the best interest of the people that you serve. So the choice is yours. You each have a vote. You each have a voice, and how you use both is up to you. Thank you. Pamela Rovner, King Street, Pine Point. After attending all of the ad hoc committee meetings, I actually feel sorry for the council members who did not attend those meetings. You might be asking yourself why, but it's because the majority of the committee have proposed a whole lot of new rules for the beach, such as during the spring, from this month to that month, you can walk your dog from this time to that time at this beach, but not that beach. Then, if it's past this date, you can walk your dog this way, but if it's not that date, you've got to go that way. If this condition exists, you can walk your dog at this time. If it's not that condition, then it's 40 days after that time. During summer months, you can walk your dog from this time to that time, but after that time, you have to walk this way. 
But in the winter, you can you also can't walk your dog on the beach from this time to that time, but you can walk with your dog from this time to that time. Then we have the garbage. Garbage cans can be here, but they can't be there. A sign has to say that if you carry your stuff in, you have to carry your garbage out. You can't fly a kite, even though you may have been told to go fly a kite. Even from, uh, you can't go do any windsurfing from this month to that month, nor volleyball playing from this date to that date either. A whole bunch of new signs are going to have to be made to let everyone know about these new rules of this and that. Then there will probably be a special interest group that is for the signs, a special interest group that is against the signs, because surely the signs will kill somebody or something. Scarborough couldn't enforce the ordinances that they had, which is much easier than the proposed set of rules. Albert Einstein said, and I quote, everything should be made as simple as possible, but not simpler. I hope the council can heed Albert's advice. Thank you. Seth Fernald, 45 Maple Avenue, Scarborough. Uh, I was encouraged by the suggestion today to take the current ordinance and push it back in alignment with the Plover date, uh, April 1st or whatnot. Uh, I'm, I think that's uh, you know greatly mitigate any potential overage between you know the dog and the plover. Again, it's, can the dogs and plovers commingle? They have for I think 30 years, haven't had a problem. I understand also that there's a concern about the financial responsibility and liability that the town may incur or things they may incur. If I were to go to the beach now and get bit by a dog, I wouldn't think to sue the town. I wouldn't think the town would be liable for that. If I got stung by a jellyfish at the beach, I wouldn't think the town would be liable because I was allowed to go in the water or be at the beach. Uh, so how the USF Wild, uh, Fish and Wildlife were, you know, the legal legality of them first imposing the spine on us, I know has been under great question, something we may or may not explore. We haven't seen, you know, the, uh, the records, so we, we don't know what's happening there. Uh, I think going forward, there are ways to greatly reduce, reduce the liability and the wording of the ordinance and the allowance of the dogs as you know, some permissive, restrictive wording of the ordinance as opposed to permissive or, uh, wording of the ordinance. So I think uh, the wording could greatly redu reduce any liability, financial exposure, um, and I think, again, lining the current ordinance with the Plover situation would be an uh, excellent way to go. Thank you. Carolyn Brasky, 14 Mass Road. Um, I want to thank you all for doing the workshop that you did tonight. Um, seems like there's a little bit of temperance now, um, and it was good to hear. I just wanted to offer this. Um, in October of 2013, Secretary of the Interior Sally Jewell issued her first executive order, and it might be worth looking up because in that order, she um, basically commands her agencies, and U.S. Fish and Wildlife is underneath her, to um, in all cases where there's regulation or enforcement to make sure that local governance and economics are reviewed and um, taken into great consideration. Um, I have the privilege of knowing Sally Jewell because she comes out of our outdoor industry and I know Sally to be reasonable and fair. And I think that if there was a good case and I think um, Scarborough has a very good case as to why the fine was unreasonable um, and, and that the lease laws that we had are reasonable lease laws for our town. Um, and until they can come up with a little better data on where the plovers are and, and um, uh, what the true dangers are, the threats are. Um, I mean, Maine Audubon Society's report didn't even have dogs in the top ten list. So um, that, that to come after us in that way, I think we have more negotiating power. Um, I also spoke with Senator Collins' office about this issue. Um, I spoke to them when I was down in D.C. for another matter. Um, and they gave me the impression that the regional office of the U.S. Fish and Wildlife last summer was under a lot of um, strain and, and sort of in flux because they were uh, very short-staffed. So that may have been somewhat reflecting, reflective of, of what came down here. So I would just urge you to look up that order 
and um, I think it could it could benefit us um, as you seek to maybe renegotiate with them. Thank you. Mark DeMauro, 337 Pleasant Hill Road. <coughs> Excuse me. I sent along an email earlier in the day, but I wasn't sure it got delivered. Google said that they were having trouble delivering, so I left off a copy. Basically, the, the uh, suggestion was that, uh, and, and I think possibly this might be the way through this thicket of complex issues that you have to uh, find your way through, um, <coughs> and that is to, to take one issue at a time, vote it up and down, uh, rather than to uh, to be tempted to try to find um, universal application of, of all possible conditions in the regulation or in the proposal. Uh, an example of that would be um, at, at Higgins Beach, uh, I can't really speak to uh, similar conditions at the other beaches, but at Higgins Beach where uh, approximately two-thirds of the beach is uh, uninhabitable from a, from a nesting point of view, uh, be given uh, the high tide. The remaining third is clearly uh, habitable. Nests occur there. Not very many, but <coughs> they do occur. Uh, <coughs> so it, it might be a reasonable consideration that that first two thirds of the beach be exempted from uh, leashes uh, uh, in, that, in that critical period, uh, given that it's highly unlikely that there will be plovers. I know there was some discussion that the plovers will range forever uh, to feed. But we really don't know that. There really isn't any evidence to that effect. I've looked at the, uh, the guidelines. I certainly haven't, I can't pretend to tell you that I've read the research. There's a massive amount of research that supports the Fish and Wildlife Guideline. But there is some reference to this particular issue and the probability that, uh, that the birds will, uh, they will forage uh, very close to where they nest. And if that's the case, and there are a lot of ifs in this, aren't there? If that's the case, and it's reasonable to consider that the first two thirds of Higgins Beach just is not a, a viable place for plovers to either to nest or, or to be feeding. So that that could be uh, uh, exempted from the uh, from the lease as an example of, of the kind of thing that I think you you might be looking for uh, to do. Thank you. Appreciate it. Anyone else? I'm going to close the comments. My name is Rob McLaughlin, 29 Vesper Street. I wasn't prepared to speak tonight, but I just thought I would. You know, I've never been involved in politics my whole life, and I'm a new resident of Scarborough, and I first, my first touch into politics was when the proposal was to adopt the ordinance banning dogs from the beach April um, through the plover season, and got heavily involved. And I gotta tell you, when the council adopted the ordinance requiring all dogs It almost appalled that you could adopt a rule without any public comment, nothing. So then I got on the bandwagon and I was involved when we tried to get the signatures and all the people, all the signatures, and we it won by a landslide. I mean, you know, it, people talked and spoke. And then where you lost me was when you formed the ad hoc committee because quite frankly, in my opinion, it's not representative of the vote. And it's certainly, I mean, two of the members live at Higgins Beach. I mean, we have a lot of beaches in Scarborough. And just in that fact in itself, to me, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't a fair ad hoc council. So I dropped out. I became disengaged because at the end of the day, I kind of lost faith that we're going to, because I'm going to end up doing what I want to do because I look at my $11,000 tax bill for a 100 by 100 square foot lot with a 110 year old house that's 800 square feet and I'm paying $11,000 in taxes. We could never enforce the old ordinance. At 5 o'clock, if you're down there, dogs were running wild. So we can put all the ordinances that we want. Who is going to enforce it? And I'll be damned if I'm going to watch someone from Falmouth's dog running loose while I'm paying my taxes and I'm putting her on leash, it's not going to happen. And I'm not proud of it. Um, I'm, 
I applaud all these dog owners, and they may be viewed as the vocal minority, but they're out for everyone. I'm the self-centered all about me because I'm going to do whatever I want, but they're fighting for a cause, and I applaud them, and I thank them, and I hope that you're reasonable. Thank you. Move approval. Second. All in favor? Opposed? Uh, treasurer's warrants. There are none. Adjustments to the agenda. Uh, adjustments to the agenda. I'm sorry. Are there any adjustments to the agenda? That's okay. I, I, I would propose, uh, based on conversation I had with Councilor Holbrook, uh, an alternative order number 1423, and it would be entitled uh, move approval on the request of the Ad Hoc uh, Animal Death. Control Advisory Committee to accept its report, period. So that would replace what's on your agenda. Mm -hmm. That's what's on mine. Yes, but mm -hmm. differently on the agenda that was published. No. Sorry. 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 Hi, I am Becky Delaware. I'm president of the Scarborough Historical Society and a member of the Historic Preservation Committee. I'm here tonight to bring you an update on what the committee has been doing. Um, I believe there was a sheet in your packet on the preliminary list of places of significant significance in Scarborough. <coughs> this sheet is a result of reviewing the 1993-94 House <coughs> survey done by the Scarborough Historical Society as a result from the Greater Portland Land uh, as a result of a grant from the Greater Portland Landmarks. This survey found 1,282 buildings of historic or architectural significance in Scarborough, which filled approximately 10 notebooks. Aiming for 100 buildings that were most significant, we condensed the 1,282 down to 318 buildings and then further reduced it to a single sheet that's before you. There were a lot of difficult decisions to make on which buildings to eliminate, which ones were more important than others. I wanted to explain the list um, on the, the sheet you have. The top list are those buildings that are currently endangered. And as you can see, at least one, the Benjamin Barn, is too late. It fell down while we were doing this process. These buildings are in need of immediate attention because of neglect or new ownership. The second list are those buildings that may not be in immediate danger because the current owners, owners value them and are preserving them. These, um, but if there is a change of ownership, they very well could become endangered. The third list are those buildings that are integral to Scarborough's history and should be monitored so that they don't become endangered. The fourth, fourth list are list of his, historic sites that are not marked. They are sites that are important to Scarborough's history but are not well enough known so they could be easily recognized and may be for, forgotten and endangered. The fifth part list is a group of uh, cemeteries, the private cemeteries that are at risk there may be additional ones. This committee is going around trying to check each private cemetery. There are over 50 private cemeteries on private land, mm -hmm. and we're trying to check and update the conditions so that we know which ones are truly endangered and which ones are being taken care of by the uh, landowners. Tonight, we're hoping for public input on any building sites or cemeteries that we have not identified and should be. 
We are looking for incentives to help people preserve their historic buildings and sites. We are asking guidance from you to meet the goals that you have given us and we're here to ask any questions that you may have of us. So thank you. If you have any questions or comments, we certainly would like to hear them. Any, any questions? Okay. Yeah, I, I don't have any questions at this time, but I'm, I'm thrilled to see that Scarborough is uh, finally looking at our historic buildings. Um, I know I live in a pretty old house, not as old as some of these, but um, I just think that it's important to the character of this town, and I, you know, thank you for all the work that you've been doing. I second that. <coughs> Thanks very much. I guess I was, I was going to tie it in later in my <laughs> liaison stuff, but... Um, I just want to comment again, I mean, I, I can't appreciate enough um, the work of this committee has been out, outstanding. And um, again, the dedication to the research, which is daunting, and, and the time and the commitment <coughs> to put into it. Um, the one thing um, I, I do want to make sure is um, the list that you see in front of you, although we currently have uh, no rules and no intention to enforce upon um, individual property owners, but certainly the intent of the list is that as these arise, that we have this as immediate radar for um, little things like for the Danish Village um, Fountain and Archway. Um, that is under contract. That is something that's about to be developed. Um, so as we, you know, if they come through that planning board process, that maybe we can approach them and say, can you work this under the green space requirements? And you know, just to have these as the forefront, you know, we reach out to work with these folks um, to try to maintain these because this is our history. Um, and as you can hear, that history is, has dwindled quite a bit over the years and, and the what's left kind of falls into play. Um, certainly the work of this committee, um, now that things have been settled a little bit and there's some identification that's taken place, the next phase is about to go underway. So again, if counselors can be thinking of ideas and concepts for, um, you know, certainly our goal was to have um, carrots and to encourage property mm -hmm. owners to want to participate. So if you have any ideas or concepts about ways to achieve that, um, that working into that is the next phase. Um, also, we'll be working on some public outreach. Um, again, th that's that next step. We'd like to take that core list of, we'll say 100. <laughs> we'll say 100 and reach out as the town to these individual mm -hmm. owners just to give them a little bit of a, <coughs> you know, an awareness, if you will, of, hey, you have something that's important, it's, you know, significant in, in a great, great way and have that outreach segment. Um, and then lastly, um, Tom had informed me that our new town website has some really interesting features um, that we can have a survey section mm -hmm. so we can survey the public and we'll be looking to implement that as well as to places of interest or something mm -hmm. that's unique or trying to chase down a story sometimes can, can be the other dif difficult thing. So being able to pose a question to the public. Um, geez, you know, we're really having a hard time. We, we, we heard there's an Indian burial ground oh, here, right. but can, can somebody help us very, you know, yeah, verify that? Um, so or point us in the right direction to find it. So um, they've done a staggering amount of work, and again, I, I applaud them wholeheartedly. Um, so again, if you have any thoughts, please, please reach out. We'd love to hear them. Um, that's the next phase. We've been working with the town planner. Um, to start looking at what we can do as a town to encourage, like I said, that preservation. So. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you. Cause I meant, I meant we. It's too bad we didn't get it started a little bit early because we lost mm -hmm. that the widow's war. Oh yeah. Boy, everybody misses that. Area. So this this is an important committee for the town in the preservation of our history. Thank both of you. Thank you. Okay, hey, old business. Under old business, order number 14-19 is act on the name posted to the personal appeals board by the appointments committee on February 12th. Okay. Um, Jessica? Pull it up. 
Um, move approval of order number 14-19, Maria Poit Penny as Dorian Whitney to the Personal Appeals Board with the term to expire in 2016. Second. Okay. Any discussion? Thank All you for there. volunteering. Yes. Opposed? New business. Under new business, order number 14-20 is act on the request to authorize the town manager to sign any and all documents for the TriGen project and authorize the reallocation of monies from fiscal year 2009 Sawyer Road CIP account <coughs> of $65,972 and the remaining balance of the $91,213 from the Public Safety Building Reserve account. Okay. If I could just offer yes, a few may. words of introduction. It's interesting this is listed as new business. Uh, this project has been around and live uh, since 2009 that I'm aware of. Uh, this is a project that was actually named by, uh, specifically in the comprehensive energy plan uh, this town council adopted back in 2009. And I'm certainly pleased to be before you this evening uh, ready to make this uh, a reality. Essentially this project, uh, and we do have members of the energy committee here present, we have Judy Roy, Rick Miking is in the back, he's the current chair of the committee, and Mike Wallace. Mike serves an uh, interesting dual capacity as a committee member, but he also works for the consulting engineering firm that we've retained to assist us, provide technical assistance. But essentially this project, uh, in a nutshell, and I provide you probably far more information than you really were interested in knowing about, but uh, the concept is that we would locate a new <coughs> facility, a, a physical plant, uh, so to speak, uh, right next to town hall here, and this unit uh, would be gas-fired, uh, and it would provide for the heating, cooling, and electricity needs of this building. And there are certain times of the year, uh, particularly on electricity, where we're producing far more electricity than is needed to power this building. Um, we have the benefit of a campus-style setup here. There's certainly a ton of electrical demand uh, right behind us at the high school, so there's plenty of use and demand behind the meter, so to speak. Um, so uh, in those... On those occasions where we're producing excess electricity, we certainly have ample need for that, and, and we can reap uh, the benefit and savings. Um, so I'm here before you this evening seeking your approval to uh, sign the necessary documents. This is for a design-build concept using a local company called SelfGen Incorporated, and also auth uh, seeking authorization for some additional funds, um, though we did secure a 216 thousand dollar grant from Efficiency Maine, uh, project costs including construction and consulting and support. Um, also, <coughs> uh, does put us a bit out of budget in terms of what the CIP approval was in the current year. So my two proposed sources of funding was, is one from a, a dormant CIP account. It was designated for Soria Road back here. Uh, work has been performed and that money has just frankly been sitting there and the auditors and the finance director would like to <laughs> frankly get it off the books. Uh, the remaining money, as I suggest, come out of the Public Safety Building Reserve account. <coughs> Though this facility itself will not be sized to meet the needs of that future building, certainly all of the background engineering and research uh, will be of great value for that uh, future building should it be co-located next door. So I believe it's a, an appropriate use of those reserve funds <coughs> that have been dedicated toward the uh, Public Safety Building. Uh, so again, we have uh, technical resources here, should there be detailed questions. Uh, I, Judy Roy mentioned to me at the outset that she may want to speak on this issue, so I remind the Chair that um, there may be some public comment. Okay, <laughs> okay um, well, I have uh, public comment on it. Judy. Thank you. Uh, Judy Roy, 2nd Avenue, Scarborough. Um, this is an exciting uh, order, and I wish I were there to vote on it. Um, it. The whole process began in 2006 when Ron Owens was still the uh, manager, and they were ta uh, they had an energy task force, and that energy task force looked at the um, the needs of the community as far as energy and and how people in the various, particularly the municipal departments, were um, conserving energy and reducing the carbon footprint. And uh, it took until 2009 uh, when the Ad Hoc Committee, uh, Ad Hoc Energy Committee came on board. And um, from the get-go, um, we had, uh, and I'll kudos to the committee members, Paul Aubrey, who uh, actually now is not on the committee, but he is the lead engineer in his business, is the one is designing this. 
Um, we had a really exciting group with Paul Aubrey, Debbie, Deb McDonough. Uh, she uh, she is totally off the grid now as far as energy energy for her own home. Uh, Scott Barraby and uh, Ian Engelman and Rick Meinkin, and uh, I was the uh, council uh, rep uh, on on that liaison on that committee. And uh, so it's really exciting for those of us that have been on the committee for a long period of time to see this come to fruition. Um, I think what's really important, uh, the important parts of it, people will say, well, what's a tri-gen model? And, I, and Tom, I thought Tom would probably spit that out, but he didn't. Um, and uh, it's very simply, the tri-gen is to sim simultaneously produce electricity, heating, and cooling from one energy source. So that's what we'll be doing. And <clears throat> the goals of the project as we moved along uh, with the committee were to, one, reduce the energy cost, and that's estimated to be by 20 to 30 percent, um, to create a revenue stream from energy initiatives and assets. And uh, the committee is hopeful that we'll, we'll come back to you as a council and ask that a reserve fund be established. And, and we've done that with many of our, uh, like the, co the Coastal Harbor Committee, and you know, so that we, always, we have monies available to move forward with projects that are important such as these. Third, uh, the third goal of the project was to enhance municipal growth by controlling energy costs. And then fourthly, to protect the environment with energy initiatives. And I think this, this tri-generation model speaks to that. And uh, the next order, I'm going to be leaving before the next order, but the next order is going to talk about the installation of some solar panels on two of our buildings, the Community Services Maintenance Building and the North Scarborough um, <coughs> uh, Fire Station, which the cost of installation is being uh, done by a, a separate entity. Uh, and the town will buy the energy from that, but we'll have the option of buying that solar power uh, it, system uh, in six or seven years for a, a low sum of $72,000. So I, I just wanted you know, to encourage you to uh, approve this uh, and, and move us forward. Um, the return on investment uh, for this project, uh, although costing uh, a total of um, $873,585, the return on investment is less than four years. And I mm -hmm. think that speaks well for that, for that energy project. And I think as a municipality, we are on the forefront for municipalities as far as what we're doing to try to be self-sufficient with our energy, energy needs. We started out looking at all kinds of low-hanging fruit, uh, and uh, we've done, and many of our departments had, were already doing many of those things, investigating biodiesel fuel, um, putting in new lighting that was more economic, uh, talking about idling policies for particularly public works. So there are a lot of low-hanging fruit. We've also reached out to the community. We do have a website, and if you look under the committees, you'll see Energy Committee, and there's, uh, there's uh, ways in which you can contact Energy Committee if you have home uh, needs for energy conservation. So all in all, the whole project is really, really exciting. We've got some new members on the committee, Anton Bodar, Sandy Dargo, David uh, Kirstein, and, and Mike Wallace uh, just joined the committee, and Bill Donovan is the council liaison. So the committee is real excited that we've come this far. Uh, to get this tri-gen model in place, and then the solar energy just happened as we moved along the way, and uh, uh, it, it, it uh, bodes well for the, for the town of Scarborough, and also kudos to the town manager who saw this as an innovative uh, uh, project, and he's moved forward with us, and he'll admit that he probably wasn't quite as savvy as he needed to be on energy conservation and uh, nouveau ways of creating energy, but... Uh, Certainly, there's a lot that all of us can do to save energy. Uh, uh, in my own home, my electric bill was $140 a month. I now pay $69 a month, and I've dealt just with basically low-hanging fruit, insulation, CFL light bulbs, and, and the like. And so um, there's lots of ways that we can reduce the carbon footprint on, 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 our, on our planet. Uh, and uh, Scarborough is uh, making great strides by doing this tri-gen model, so I would encourage you to approve the manager's request and to, and to uh, use the monies, as he suggested, uh, to uh, finance the shortfall of it. So thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. 
Uh, I believe those were chosen uh, in large part due to their electrical use themselves, uh, the orientation of the roof, and, and probably the ease of uh, application or installation. Um, and uh, this project is essentially ready to go uh, within the month, so we'll be looking to reap the benefits of this right away. Uh, so what's, what I'm uh, here asking for you uh, to authorize me tonight uh, would be to sign the power purchase agreement. Again, the concept is that we, uh, through this agreement, agree to buy power back from this corporation, if you will, that we're a party to uh, for, the, for, for a period of time. Uh, I, I don't know, I don't recall whether I provide you a complete copy of the agreement, but I assure you it's been well scrutinized and reviewed by town, uh, uh, the town attorney. And we're very comfortable with uh, with the document as it is, and, and do recommend approval. <coughs> hey, do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Motion and second. Any discussion? Council Don. Uh, this is a really unique public-private partnership. Uh, this involves uh, private entities uh, and pretty philanthropic, too, because of the deal that the town gets out of this, uh, putting the money up to uh, install the solar panels. Uh, they've selected the, the best, the lowest hanging fruit, as people say, uh, for the town so that the uh, payback will be the fastest. So we're able to not have any money go out at the present time, buy power, uh, electric power, at a discounted rate for the next seven years while the income tax federal income tax credits run their course for the investor of the money uh, and then buy at a discount, uh, all of which is a very, very desirable outcome and, again, is demonstrating a, a really good energy leadership for the, t for the town. I'd just like to add to that that uh, this came to us through an employee of the town. Uh, they had read something someplace and made a suggestion and we acted on it, and it's coming to fruition. One last com I have one comment. Um, well, two. I lied. I have two. Um, my first comment is that I'm, I'm glad to hear that this is the product of an employee employee's idea. I, I think that's a great thing. That that was what we were looking for. You know, cost savings ideas. Um, so that's fantastic. Um, so I just want to applaud our, our staff for always thinking, you know, a little bit more. Um, the other thing I just wanted to say is um, certainly I do um, support the solar project. Um, I just hope that we take some time to maybe view other buildings that we have and look for similar projects. As far as I'm concerned, you know, the more of these types of things we can do, there's the cost savings, it's greener, it's better. Um, look at, you know, keep looking at every building we have, you know, public works, um, all the other fire barns, maybe solar didn't work there, does something else work there? Um, maybe that's wind or, you know, whatever, but, you know, just keep keep marching with those, those green projects. Um, the Energy Committee is, is doing a bit of a, an audit process by going around, our last meeting was at the public works. A facility and we toured it and so the Energy Committee was able to look at and and the discussion that ensued was that there may be some things that we could propose in the uh, in the uh, realm of improved efficiencies uh, so I think that's a great I, I applaud your comment. <coughs> Two cents. Two cents, rather. I meant two cents yeah. below market. Mm -hmm. And then um, there's if the buyouts an option. That's right. So it sounds like a win-win to me. All right. And I, I think when that time comes, um, it should be abundantly clear that the buyout option is preferred. <coughs> but we defer that decision for mm -hmm. a different day. The useful the useful life of these systems is about 40 years. Oh, okay. So after six years of tax credits. If we get the rest, uh, we own it, and uh, uh, it, it would be very 
financially advantageous. It sounds so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. With that, um, all those in favor? Opposed? Oh, I see none. Thank you all. Order number 1422 is act to authorize the town manager to sign the purchase and sale option agreement with Habitat for Humanity for property located at 75 Broad Turn Road. I guess I'm on. Yes. I'm on again. Yes. Uh, Councilor Holbrook certainly can jump in. <coughs> He's been right uh, in the middle and immersed fully in this issue. Um, as the council's aware, and I hope the public <coughs> as well, uh, the town's been working for a couple of years now with uh, Habitat for Humanity of Greater Portland regarding a partnership to build uh, what we view as uh, workforce housing or affordable housing on town-owned property at 75 Brockton Road. Uh, this project has gone through any number of uh, maturations uh, over that period of time. Initially, and, and still fundamentally, there is a memorandum of understanding that lays out the, the, the essence of the deal, if you will. There have been some things that have changed, predominantly due to Habitat's um, pursuit of financing this project. This is uh, distinctly different than their model. Uh, typically, uh, they do one house, uh, you know, they identify a family and build one house and move on to the next. This is really taking on the resp role and responsibility as though they're a developer. In fact, they are. Uh, the, the basic concept in, in what's changed is that the memorandum of, of understanding that, uh, envisions 17 lots and 17 homes. I shouldn't say 17 lots, 17 homes. Uh, and now, they're proposing 13, and that's due in large part to um, they don't have as great a need, I guess, uh, to, to uh, in terms of funding the infrastructure improvement costs, uh, but they feel very comfortable that 13 is a doable number and manageable for them. Uh, also, their new financing requires pushing out the project a bit longer in the, in the first instance, though interestingly, the project would actually be completed sooner under this proposal. So what I'm here before you this evening is to request uh, an uh, authorization to sign an amended and restated purchase option agreement uh, that we have in place currently with Habitat uh, to do exactly what I said. Um, again, Councilor Holbrook has been fully immersed in this and, and perhaps has some comments and I'm pleased to answer questions you might have. Okay, do I have a motion? So moved. Second. If I just might add one comment to that, the other thing about the 13 going down to 13, um, that was also in part to address there were some neighborhood concerns mm -hmm. um, through that process, um, and that was something we had unofficially agreed to with the neighborhood is that if we could make the numbers work and financing, you know, all come into play, um, that we would shrink that number of, of housing down a little bit. Um, so again, it was originally 17, 13 is a little, you know, obviously less and makes the neighborhood a little more happy as well. So. <coughs> well, it's worded a little different. I missed a step. Public comment. Is, a, um, is there anybody from the public that would like to comment on this? Seeing none, we'll move back to council discussion. Is there any discussion? Uh, I know, yeah, I know just knowing the real estate market the way I do that I think it's exciting to be able to um, provide and offer houses that are a little more affordable uh, to folks um, who want to live in Scarborough. So um, I'm, I'm very supportive of this project. I think it's great. Okay, I, I joined the meeting. Um, I think it was the last meeting, was it? Do you have another one after that? Um, uh, informal, but yes. Yeah, to see um, how you know how it was progressing along, I'm very <coughs> interested in it. Scarborough definitely needs affordable homes, um, which haven't really been happening. A lot of them are just fix fix me uppers, and uh, this is pretty exciting to be a, a model of Scarborough, <coughs> and in the hopes that we could. Uh, in the future, move along and maybe do more of these projects uh, jointly. Um, the biggest question, that, one of the questions that came up during the, the meeting I was at, and I'd like to ask this, in the new agreement, or some sort of a, the wording in it, uh, it was supposed to be um, Scarborough residents um, or uh, 
employees at first refusal uh, if they were able to, uh, we had to ask them first. <coughs> Yeah, there's no such requirement. It certainly has been a, a point of discussion and I think a point of um, priority for the Alliance and to the extent that the Alliance will assist in identifying folks and helping them market the properties, uh, our first order of business I think will be to prospect right in our backyard. Uh, mm -hmm. We have email addresses of, you know, something like 500 either town or school employees which uh, I think is some of the best ground to cover frankly. Uh, that's that's the thing that's most um, telling about this whole cause is that when we, when we say workforce, we're talking about yeah. teachers, firemen, um, you know, police officers can't afford to live in our town, and I think that's a tragedy. So I think your point's well taken. Uh, I'm not aware of any such requirement that it must be uh, Scarborough residents. Um, I, I see a signal from the end. I think, if I'm not mistaken, it's five. There's five alliance units. Yes, five alliance units, but I, I thought the question was whether there was a, a, a requirement for Scarborough residents. I think there's always been a preference and will continue to push that preference. Uh, one of the challenging things, and I think we're very close to this point, is that we've really made a point of uh, ensuring that Habitat is the developer. And I think that we're very interested in the project, in the final, pro in the process. We also need to acknowledge that they are a developer and we can't control every part of it. Um, having said that, they've been very receptive to our involvement. In fact, this week, uh, two members of the Alliance that are in the audience and I attended a design meeting with uh, folks from Habitat and their designers. Uh, and, and I think that was very appreciated from our point of view to be able to still be involved at that level and that level of detail. But um, again, I think it's important that Habitat step out in front very soon and, uh, and act and become the developer of this project. No, I, I agree with that. I've, I've been hoping that the, uh, <coughs> we're going to uh, come forward before now. We're uh, so patiently waiting. And I think the, the public would be interested to know that this is one of the principal goals that we set to move forward on uh, workforce housing, affordable housing, and it's nice to see this come to fruition. <coughs> Any other comments? Seeing none, put it to a vote. All those in favor? Opposed? Thank you all. Order number 1423 is act on the request from the Ad Hoc Animal Control Advisory Committee to accept its report. Motion to accept the report? Oh. Um, Would that be in order? Do we need to amend well, that well, or First that of all, do you have, want to um, uh, do you want to um, explain anything with it before we go to public comment? Presenting? No, I, I think we were just. Ex uh, it was this was a formal acceptance of the report from the committee? I think that was the intent of the mm -hmm. of the motion. Yeah. In, in fact, you know, the mm -hmm. council created the committee, gave it its gave it a charge. It's come back to you with its report. Mm -hmm. I think it's only appropriate for you to simply accept that. And in doing so, I don't see you endorsing mm -hmm. all of it or any of it. No. Uh, you're simply accepting and acknowledging that the work was completed as requested. That's correct. That's that's what I was looking yep. for. Um, and. Just to reiterate, um, it, it's a report that the committee did, and uh, like the manager said, we're just accepting their findings. We're not voting to enact anything. So um, with that, is there any public comment? Just the podium. And name <laughs> and address, three minutes. See, the benefit of you guys uh, getting done with this is I won't have to talk with you anymore. You won't have to listen anymore because we're probably both tired of that. Uh, I just wanted to say I was uh, very encouraged by listening to your discussions tonight with regard to uh, this report. Uh, obviously, there's more to come, but it was uh, very encouraging. Councillor Holbrook and Sinclair, Mr. Sullivan as well, um, uh, bringing what I think is uh, a very measured approach to the proceeding, and I wanted to thank you for that. Uh, certainly there's been rhetoric uh, back and forth on this for quite a while. Uh, it is a hot issue, uh, as you have surmised, um, but I thought you were uh, very well informed 
and very measured in your approach on how you're uh, proceeding. And I, I did want to recognize you for that. I'm sure you've taken heat from me and many <laughs> others on both sides. Um, but when you uh, when you are acting uh, in a way that should be recognized, it's fair to recognize you for that. And so I wanted to thank you. Thank you. Max? Robert Rovner for King Street Scarborough. I just have a question. The report that you're accepting, um, I know it includes, I just want to make sure it includes both the majority, minority, and the independent study that was done, all three. Can I take a yes from that? Not sure what the independent study is, but it does. Well, not study, I'm sorry, I used the wrong word. The, end, the independent, um, what word do you want to use? Joanne. Oh, Joanne. Mahoney submitted something to the council. I just want to make sure, and it was supposed to be part <coughs> of the report. I just want to make sure that all three items were going to be studied, had the opportunity to be studied by the council. They've all been provided to council. That report is not part of the committee's report, but the materials have been provided to council. Is the minority um, report part of the? Yes, it is. Part of this? Yeah, it's all available online. I encourage you to, to, to view the report. I've already looked at it. We all received the right here. Okay. So now we have it. Uh, okay. We've read it. I just want to make sure that because you're signing off on something, having received something, I just want to make sure that was part of it. This is right. It's the full committee report. Right. Thank you very much. Good evening, Council. Joanne Mahoney, 18 Pillsbury Drive. I'm the one that submitted the citizen's proposal, and I just wanted to make sure that um, you do have a look at it and take it into your consideration. Thank you. Thank you. Thank anyone else? Would anyone else like to speak on this? Seeing that, I close the public hearing. Uh, now we need a motion. Move approval. Second. Discussion. I just want to reiterate that um, the agenda that you may have seen, um, there was an additional word in that that said and um, implement. That was what was changed about the agenda this evening. So order number 14-23 does read, move approval on the request to form from the Ad Hoc Animal Control Advisory Committee to accept the report. Um, there's periods there, and I just wanted to reiterate that to everybody that it's not implement and implement. So it's just to accept that they did the work and they've submitted it, which is what we asked of them, and um, that's, that's where it does stop. What was struck was and start the process to implement its recommendation. Right. It struck. So it's just to accept the report. Just if I could, I yes, wanted to publicly right. thank members of the committee. Uh, these are folks that I um, approached personally and um, very much appreciate the long and hard work. I assure you it was not fun for anyone. I see two members still in the audience here. But those others that are at home, I personally very much appreciate the effort, and uh, and I hope the council appreciates uh, the effort and the vigilance with which they they took the task that was given mm -hmm. to them. I also was going to mention that I was just speaking for anybody else. Oh, I think you're pretty. <laughs> no, that's okay. That's all right. I, I wanted to make sure it was said. Yep, I I agree with you 100%. Um, and then I watched uh, mo most of. I mean, I've watched every meeting. Um, Unfortunately, I didn't get through all of them, the full entirety of them, um, because the kids wanted my attention. So um, I did what I could, and I admit, wow, there was a lot of work put into that. Um, the report isn't by any means going to be ignored. We're still going to digest it. There are still a lot of things that are in here that uh, can be um, implemented that are, are good for clover protection. Um, and uh, but, I mean, we'll just have to see where it goes from here. Anyone else? I, I also would like to thank the committee for all the hard work they did. I know it was a, a lot of time, and I also want to thank all the citizens who've shown a real interest in this issue. For me, it's always in. I don't know, I just find it very helpful to have people email and make comments, and I know you may not think that's true, but I read them all, and uh, I try to at least get back to you to say I at least read it. Um, and again, we know we've got a lot 
to digest, but I think we're off to a good start. And keep emailing. That's fine. <laughs> Um, I attended the uh, monthly senior advisory board meeting on Tuesday morning, and they're off and running on creating a budget for this year. Um, they're also taking a look at uh, additional programs that they'd like to implement. Um, the We're going to give everybody a minute. To, we're still having a council meeting here, so you know, you can go out the hall and talk. Give you a minute to go. <coughs> Thank you, Council Blaze. Bud Hanson, who is the chairman of the senior advisory committee, and myself are going to meet with. Uh, Andrea Kilyard from Piper Shores to discuss with her um, her involvement in senior activities and talk about how perhaps Piper Shores and Scarborough can team up together, form a partnership, which is one of our goals, um, to do additional activities for the seniors in the town. So we're looking forward to that. Thank you. That's it. Great. Council of Benedict. Uh, coastal waters did not meet, although they are down at the beach all the time, seeing how the dredging's going. Fortunately, the weather has not been very complimentary to the workings in the water. Um, That's about that. That's all I have. Thank you. I have nothing new to add since last week. Councilor Donovan. I think uh, the Energy Committee met and uh, was able to include the remarks in, in the prior matter, so I think we're almost set. Okay. Councilor Holbrook? Yeah, um, so as you can see, um, <laughs> Housing, <laughs> Housing Alliance is um, <coughs> meeting again, but um, obviously the bigger events and parts are underway, so I'm sure we'll be discussing what happened tonight. Um, Historic Preservation will be meeting Tuesday, um, March 4th at 6.30 p.m. That's their regular uh, monthly meeting. Um, that meeting should be with, the, if I'm not mistaken, with um, Dan Bacon, our town planner. He's been working with us to help um, give us some, some ideas of where we could do things within the zoning and, and carrots and whatnot to add that um, would help encourage preservation and some ideas that way. Um, then his uh, finance committee will be meeting tomorrow morning at 9 a.m., so that's February 20th, and um, that will be a joint workshop for us with the school finance committee, um, just to kind of talk things out a little bit and see where they're at and let them know where we're at. Um, and that's it for me. Yeah. Thank you. Um, just to touch on ordinance, we still have not been a ordinance March 5th. March 5th. Yeah. And um, we'll go right to town managers. Thank you. Just a couple of points of interest. Um, Scarborough is continuing its path of getting some notoriety uh, on the national stage. Uh, interestingly, um, about 10 days ago, we were notified that Coastal Living Magazine has uh, 
recognize Scarborough is uh, in the top ten of happiest coastal towns. <laughs> um, given some of the discourse lately, I'm surprised we <laughs> rose to that level. But none nonetheless, we are, in fact, in the top ten. There's an online voting um, process underway through the end of March. And if you go on the town's website, we've provided a link to that. So yeah. we encourage folks. I believe you can vote. Um, it may be limited to once a day. But, once a day. Um, if you'll help us in that cause of being designated potentially the happiest coastal <laughs> town, uh, that would be great. Uh, <laughs> um, I, actually, we do get some a very good write-up. Um, uh, you know, they yeah. come back and do a, a further, more detailed piece, which I, I don't mean to minimize how right. important getting that kind of press coverage uh, free of charge is to us. So it is important. Uh, yeah. So please take take the time to vote. Also, we're responding to a request from a local production company who's interested in using a portion of Pine Point Beach to do a reenactment of uh, it's essentially the invasion of Normandy Beach. Apparently, the characteristics of uh, Pine Point Beach are very similar to, to that part of France. Um, and this is for a documentary to be aired on the History Channel at some point. And so we're working through the details. Uh, they'll actually have soldiers in uniform, veterans, so there's uh, some logistical issues and notification at neighbors. Uh, but that time of the year, we don't think it will pose any real problem with the butters. So we're at this point working with them, and I'll pass on further details if that actually materializes. Um, <coughs> this will be March 1st, so I, I think we'll be uh, outside of any of those is issues. <coughs> in terms of the dredge <coughs> project, uh, Governor Benedict alluded to it. The project has been delayed. There have been contract disputes. We're not party to those particulars, but that's caused some delays, and weather has uh, further delayed the project to the point that they've only dredged about 100 uh, cubic yards. Now, just to put that in comparison, they're under contract to dredge over 120,000 cubic yards. So, um, you know, time is ticking, and the window is closing in that they must complete work in the next six weeks or so by the end of March. So we're hopeful they're talking about bringing on 24-hour shifts, uh, multiple shifts a day, but working 24 hours a day to catch up. So in future meetings, I'll update you on the progress, but uh, it's been slow getting started. And just uh, a couple of points of interest. Um, meetings have been rescheduled this week. The planning board meeting uh, that was scheduled for last night is scheduled for next Monday evening. And the Board of Assessment Review that was scheduled on the 13th is now going to be March 18th. And just a last note, um, next Friday I'll be meeting with three classes. Uh, it's a civics course taught at the high school here. Um, George Jones, the teacher, and I have established a relationship whereby he brings his classes over and we actually have it here in the council chamber. Mm -hmm. and it's a great opportunity for me to frankly talk to, a, although I've got teenagers at home, but uh, <laughs> hear from them what's on their mind. And uh, it always amazes me. Um, the sorts of things they pick up at dinner conversation and hopefully reading local <laughs> newspapers. Um, so I look forward to that opportunity. <coughs> Thank you. Councillor comments. Councillor Holbrook. Uh, yes, I have. Um, get prepared. Um, this is a point in, in the meeting where um, we generally do our condolences to, to the families of people that have lost loved ones here in town. Um, so I do have that list this evening. Um, well, I'd like to offer our condolences to the Helen Ward family, the Dorothea Belligeron family, Louise Callahan family, um, Robert Carrier, who was, um, he's actually, he was served in the Navy for World War II and the Korean War, and, um, Kind of an interesting character. He had retired from F.D. Warren after 40 years, but then um, went to, um, which as a family member for him, hosted Papa's Workshop at the Toddle Inn for, for <laughs> quite a while. It was very interesting. Um, so as well as um, Peter Demi Dem Dumas, um, Richard Ellis, um, Euphema Larrabee, also known as Faye. She was our um, Scarborough's Boston Post King Award um, recipient. Um, so she, again, very colorful, <coughs> interesting, unique individual. Um, during the <coughs> war, she became a welder, um, helping to build the Liberty ships over in South Portland. Um, and she was very active in, in a lot of charitable events. Um, 
e even in her um, advanced years that she did knitting hats and mittens for the needy, just a very involved lady in the community. Um, Phyllis Marriard, Doris Chamberlain, and Goalie, Marguerite Reserve Martin. Um, she's another one of our, our Scarborough Lifetime residents who passed away. Um, Norman Mayberry, Elizabeth Ann Mullen. <coughs> um, am I writing? Lillian Ronfeld, um, Rose Ireland Russell. Um, she's another um, resident that had been a longtime resident here in Scarborough. She was from the Green Acres neighborhood. Um, and again, very interesting lady. She um, spent 40 plus years singing with the choir at First Cr Congressional Church of Scarborough. And she was um, held several state championships in candle pin bowling. <laughs> that was pretty interesting. Um, <coughs> Agnes Plummer Watson, um, you probably recognize the Plummer name. Um, she's a member of Dunstan Grange for over 50 years. Um, not a lifetime, but certainly a long time resident here in Scarborough. Um, and for a period of time, she worked in the West Scarborough Post Office. Um, again, very active, although she was not, um, she did not participate in our services, um, but she did volunteer um, through World War II, over 500 hours of um, volunteer time. Um, and then she was also, um, a number of years, she was the organist at the church, um, United Methodist, here in Scarborough. You mentioned one thing like that. Uh, Dick sure. Ellis uh, yeah. served for many years on Engine 7. Volunteer. Mm. Uh, volunteer. <coughs> Thank you. Um, and then as far as... My other comment is you guys will all see you have your click <laughs> bags sitting in front of you. Um, and for those that might be interested, um, I was informed this evening by Tom that we will be getting more bags in that we'll have here at Town Hall. So if there's any residents interested in also helping to help us fundraise for the Scarborough Fuel Assistance Program that we do with Project Grace, we'll have bags right here at Town Hall. So. Filling your bag. Yeah, that's a lot of bags. Yeah, you can do it. I don't think that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking um, we can invade a, upon neighbors. Can we write a check in Lou? No. no. <laughs> you can't mean, you can still write a check, but no, you're not in Lou. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe it's, uh, it's known, but just make sure the tags are on the outside of the envelope right. so the tags need to make their way in the bag or yep. it doesn't work for us. Oh. Anything else? For me, sorry. Also, Donovan. Uh, I missed the last meeting, so I don't know if this was previously mentioned uh, that we had that weather problem. So uh, last Wednesday, I wasn't available, uh, but I I did see uh, a show, a children's educational program on Saturday morning about three weeks ago called Born to Explore, uh, and it highlighted. Uh, um, Scarborough. It was all, all, virtually all in Scarborough, and uh, and and focused on some of the iconic elements of Maine: lobstering uh, coming out of Pine Point uh, Harbor area, uh, and a, a clam bake on Ferry Beach. It was uh, it was a beautifully done show. Really portrayed Scarborough for all the beauty that it represents, and it's probably available online. So that I think if you a search for it, you probably could find maybe a YouTube tube version, but it was de definitely worth the, the the watch. It was a very nice show and great uh, great reflection of Scarborough. Thank you. Councilor Katarina. Um, yes, I will be holding my uh, open house, Councilor Open House, on Saturday, March 1st at the Dunstan Fire Station from 10 a.m. until noon. So uh, please feel free to come down to Dunstan Fire Station, bring the kids. The uh, guys and gals down there love to show off the equipment. Um, I'm open to listening to any issues you have, any kudos for the town, or just come in and say hi. I'll have coffee and uh, something to eat, so come on in. Thank you. Good. Councilor Blaze. No comments. Councilor Benedict. Ready to go home. <laughs> um, I guess just in um, closing, um, we had our, I would say, our first out of maybe two um, workshops on the um, animal control ordinance and 
waiver ordinance, protection ordinance. So um, it's, uh, I'm just thinking it's going to take some time to work through this and try to get it right. So, and I think that will do my closing comments. So motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All those in favor. <coughs>